everyone my name is Evie Lupine welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all today we are going into something that one of you all suggested in my video about vampirism and that would be can you talk about some of the kinks that you still are looking to learn about and I love this idea for a couple of reasons number one is of course I never want you all to think I'm like some kind of omnipotent kink god that knows everything there is to know about BDSM because that is totally not the case and two it gives me an opportunity to talk about some areas of BDSM that obviously I don't know enough about to make a whole video on and maybe that will expand your understanding a little bit now how I am going to handle this is we are going to do an internet friendly numbered list and I am going to go through each of the kinks that I am most looking forward to learning more about and talking a little bit about my background with them, why I want to know more about them, and a little bit about what I do know. So let's go ahead and get into it. Number one is cell popping, also known as the devil's fire or devil's kiss or micro branding. Cell popping I think is the most well-known term, but I am starting here because I think out of everything on this list, it is the one that is the least known about. When you look on FetLife, I think the group that is the biggest one for FetLife on this activity only has 1,500 members and the fetish is only listed by about 9,000 people. So it's a really, really, really small activity. Now I first came across this, I believe during a class that I took at Kinkfest. I believe it was my first one. And at the time, I didn't really do anything related to this. I had dabbled a little bit in fire play. I had never done any blood play at all. I just thought it was totally out of my wheelhouse. So unfortunately, I missed my opportunity to learn about this a couple of years ago. And ever since then, I have kind of regretted it and have been looking for someone to learn from or another class or a demo or just anyone that knows about this kink. And essentially what it is, I think the term micro branding is the most accurate or the most descriptive. And essentially what you do is you have a teeny tiny little hot poker that you dab on the skin very briefly and it leaves a small round dot. And you can use those small round dots to make patterns. It's kind of similar, I think, to stick and poke tattoos. However, this is a more semi-permanent form of body modification because it is a very brief like surface burn basically. It is mostly going to heal over time, but of course with anything, obviously you want to know the details. I want to know the details. Does it vary based on location, skin type? How semi-permanent is it? Like, is it like two months, two years, 20 years? I don't know what qualifies as semi-permanent. So I'm really looking to know more about this because I do really like the idea of body modification. I actually don't have any tattoos at all, even though I have many ideas for tattoos because I do not like making permanent commitments. I don't like the idea of like, promising a certain part of my body is going to be one way for now and forever unless I pay for really expensive tattoo removal. I am more of like a piercings kind of a person. I very much enjoy that. And from what I understand, it's like semi-permanent in maybe a similar way. Like obviously you can take out a piercing. It will leave a noticeable scar in some cases, but yeah, it's kind of more in that wheelhouse and I'm always looking for more ways to do things like that. Also, a lot of people are into branding and marks of ownership and I think having something like this is maybe a better alternative than having like a permanent barcode somewhere on your body or doing something like an actual real brand with like a hot cattle iron. Also, I have heard very good reviews of the sensation. Some of them are mixed. I hear things that it's very similar to some types of electro play or needle play. So obviously anything with needles, I'm like, ooh, okay, maybe that is up my alley. So I am very curious to see how it compares, but I am just really not having an easy time finding a way to learn about this one. 
Number two is bastinando or bastinado. I don't know. I don't speak Italian, but whatever it is, this is actually a historical form of discipline, also called foot caning or foot whipping. And I always love learning about historical kinks. Like how did we take this thing that was an actual form of torture or human punishment, maybe towards slaves or something, and then transmute it into an actual like kinky, enjoyable thing. Now I am not generally a foot person. That's not the logic behind this. But for me, I do find I like the sensation of caning as a self play thing. Caning with partners can be a little bit too intense, but I do enjoy caning when I can do it on myself. And I have played around a little bit with caning my own feet, but obviously like I do not know the technique for that. I don't know how people do it. And it's one of those skills I think would be really beneficial to learn about from another person that has more experience with it because I actually haven't taken any classes directly about caning at all. There is a book that I believe is by either Janet Hardy or Dossie Easton, I can't remember which one, and it's called Spanking for Lovers, and they do talk about caning in that book, and there's a whole other book that they have written as well that is just about caning, and they are really into it. I have not read that one yet, though, and I just really want to explore more in that direction, both for self-play, and I think it has a really, really powerful potential as a tool for punishment in a power exchange relationship that I think actually offers a really interesting separation, maybe mentally for some bottoms and submissives and masochists between like punishment pain and like fun pain, right? Because fun pain, maybe that's the butt, the back, the thighs, the whatever, but the feet, like if you are not into feet and you do not like this sensation, I think this can be a good way to incorporate pain into a punishment structure when you also do it for pleasure as well. Because if you are keeping those areas separate mentally as a submissive, it's like, oh, okay, I know this is for punishment and because I need to be corrected and not because this is like a fun, playful thing, you know? So I think there's a lot of potential there, which I think could be really interesting. Number three would be leather care. I think that some of you may be surprised to see this one on the list because I am a service sub. I do know about things like boot blacking, for example, which is leather care focused on boots, but I don't really know a lot about leather care in general. Like how do you take care of a leather cap or a vest or chaps or a skirt? How is that different? How does it vary based on the type of leather? How do you take care of leather floggers? And speaking of floggers, I have learned a little bit about this like here and there when I have taken classes about floggers, sometimes paddling where they will go over care and storage. Everyone does have a slightly different opinion there and I would like to know more about, hey, like when I am providing a service and maybe I have a partner that has a pair of leather pants or a vest, what can I do to make sure that it is stored properly, it is clean, it is taken care of because it is a very important thing symbolically in our community and taking care of leather, especially in leather culture in particular, that is a core part of service. And I just like knowing more things about that. I love leather culture. I would not consider myself at all to be in that aspect of the community, but I have a lot of respect for it and obviously if I do own leather, if my partner does, I want to make sure that I am doing the best I can for it so it can last long term and hopefully also learn how to teach you guys about how to take care of some of your leather toys because I get many questions about that, like sanitizing leather, keeping it clean, all of that, and I would really love to have some definitive answers there. Number four is foot worship. Okay. I say this and I am sure that some of you will be disappointed to hear that I do not have a foot fetish. This is one of the ones on this list that is not really because I want to know about it for my own play. It's because I get a lot of questions about feet, okay? And I wanna be able to answer about foot stuff. I want to know, okay, what's the motivation here? Why are people into it? And I, I have had many partners over the years that have varying degrees of a foot fetish, but I don't know about foot worship. Like what is the application of 
a foot fetish in BDSM? Is foot worship like a DS thing? Is it a scene thing? Can it be something where the dominant is providing foot worship? Is it only for submissives? Do you have to have a foot fetish to be into this? I have a lot of questions about it and I think this would be a really beneficial thing to learn that I can pass on to you guys. And also like, I do like some things involving feet, like not as a fetish, but like trampling, stepping, that whole wheelhouse. I actually enjoy topping for things like that. So having foot fetish maybe be part of that repertoire, adding that in. And I also like having feet on me as well, but again, not in a fetish way. I have to be really clear about that because some of y'all do not understand boundaries, but I do think it is interesting that you could have a strictly non-sexual BDSM application of something that I think most people only consider to be a sexual fetish. Number five is ice branding. We have a lot of branding on this list actually, but uh, this is like, my white whale, my Moby Dick. I have been looking for information about this for a long time. So back in the day, ye olde days of Tumblr still having kink on it. I know it still does now, but like, you know, before they really messed everything up, you know, there was a blog that I wanna say was like the submissive feminist or like something like that. And they had an informational post that was about how to do ice branding and what it was. And I even like reblogged it a couple times, I think. And I always thought, wow, that seems really cool. I want to try something like this. Similar reasons to sell popping, temporary, semi-permanent, not involving actual cattle irons, anything like that. But I never saved it and I cannot find anything else about it. And I want to know because again, alternatives to using actual brands, permanent tattoos, things for ownership and DS, all of that stuff. Also the sensation. I don't really know about that part. I've said this before. I am not a temperature play person, like temperature play, electro play, medical play. Those are the three things that are really not in my wheelhouse in terms of sensation or scene environment. But with temperature play, I really, really do not like being cold. It's borderline a hard limit for me. I really do not enjoy it, but I'm thinking, you know, if the point is that it's so cold that it leaves a burn, is it to the point where like it goes past being able to be sensed by the body as like really cold, you know? Maybe that's how it works. I don't know. I want to know more. I want to track down information about this. And I just think it could be a really unique addition to power exchange or body modification or temperature play, anything like that. So yeah, I just want to know more. Number six would be cuckolding. Again, I'm going to disappoint some people. Not my personal thing. However, it is something that is both very popular and not talked about in the BDSM world, even though it is so common as a kink, as a fetish. And it has a lot of misconceptions around it. It's kind of taboo. It's controversial. It has weird political meanings these days. And actually speaking of the political meanings behind cuckoldry, there is a wonderful video that is by a channel called Innuendo Studios. They're actually polyamorous, which is amazing. And they have a video about, I think it's called The Semiotics of Cuck. It may still be on YouTube. If it is, I will link it down below. I believe it may have had to be moved to Vimeo due to obviously YouTube not liking talking about things that involve sex and BDSM. So. Who would have guessed? So yeah, I think there are some really interesting opportunities to dig into the vernacular usage, the history, the controversy, how people actually do it today, how it intersects with polyamory and kink, is it separate? All of that stuff. Also, there are some sort of interesting subsets of cuckoldry that I don't really see anyone talk about, right? So there's like cuck queens, for example. There's also the term cuck cake, which is basically from what I can tell, like the femme equivalent of a bull. And I just, I want to know about this. I want to learn more. I want to have more terminology to share with you all to describe your kinks and your relationships. So I just really want to be able to dive into this one. Finally, we have number seven, which would be Goreans. Goreans? I don't know which one it is. It's literally an internet word. So uh, correct me in the comments if neither one of those is correct, but whatever it is, I have gotten 
many requests over the years to talk about the Planet of Gore universe and how to be a Kajira and how it overlaps with the BDSM world and I just I don't know where to start with that because my impression of it from what I have learned about it and known about it so far is kind of negative. It doesn't have the best reputation. I would say some of the assumptions that people make about the gore lifestyle is that it's very antiquated, it's sexist, it has a lot of gender essentialism ideas baked within it, it's not really done anymore, it's outdated, and there are a few little documentaries on the internet that supposedly follow an MS couple that, you know, lives this gore lifestyle and they met on Second Life and like it's kind of just a hot mess all the way through and I want to know what is the truth there? What is the world of gore actually like in the books? How did people take it and turn it into a kink thing? Is it still done? Is there still a big online presence of this kink somewhere or has it really fallen out of favor? Can you do it without those kind of more sexist, misogynistic elements? Is there role or gender reversal at all? Do people that do stuff in the gore lifestyle think themselves as separate from BDSM or part of it? And what does it look like besides collars and position training? What actually makes up living the gore lifestyle? Because I don't know besides position training. That's really all I have come into contact with in any amount of detail. And so yeah, I just don't know and I would really like to. But with that being said, those are all of the main kinks that I'm really looking forward to learning more about, hopefully at some point in the near future. Of course, there are many, many other things that are not on this list that I am still always learning about and taking classes on, but these are the ones that kind of pique my interest the most right now or are the hardest to learn about. I would love to hear what you all think down below. What are some maybe obscure or unusual kinks that you want to know more about? And maybe I can research them as well. If you did enjoy this, if you have not already, please do subscribe. I make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related topics. And finally, if you really enjoyed this, if you want to support what I do, the best way that you can do that is through Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already support me over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.